Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. I want to wish everyone a very happy and prosperous new year. To start off this year, I wanted to start with cloud computing. And for cloud computing, I'm going to create a couple of series. The first series is going to be using AWS cloud computing features. And the second one will be based on Azure cloud computing features. So to start with today, I'm going to first discuss about AWS compute feature. Now, why I decided to start with compute feature? It's because before we get into any other thing like database, or queues or messaging or streaming, the very first thing that we need to do is to deploy our code somewhere. And that's why the compute becomes, in my opinion, the first step of getting into cloud. This video is going to be mainly theoretical where I'm going to discuss all the topics of compute. And in next video, it is going to be hands-on and it might take next few videos to complete all the features of compute and the topics and the content that I'm discussing here, everything is available in AWS. I just collected all the information and compacted it and made it the way I would like to present it. If you want to get into details of any of this topic, you can always go to AWS and everything is available there. So for the AWS compute services, there are four main deployment container in my opinion. The first one is EC2 or Elastic Compute Cloud. The second one is Elastic Beanstalk. The third one is Fargate. And the fourth one is AWS Lambda. And the way I have structured this is I have gone from we managing everything to slowly completely serverless. As I discussed each of these feature in detail, it will be much more clear. So first let's look into what is EC2 or Elastic Compute Cloud. EC2 is the on-demand scalable compute capacity. EC2 instances can either be Linux or Windows. I think in 2020, they added the support for Mac as well. I'm not sure I would ever use Mac as a server deployment, but maybe for some sort of development, we could be using Mac. But the main, in my experience, the main EC2 instances that we have been using are mainly Linux and a little bit of Windows. And as you have understood by now, EC2 instances are nothing but virtual machines where we get the entire machine to ourselves. And as I just mentioned, EC2 is nothing but row server. So we can use it for anything. We can deploy SQL server into it. We can deploy IIS. We can deploy just containers. It's solely up to us what we do with the server. For connecting to the EC2 instances, we use SSH when it comes to Linux server and RDP when it comes to Windows Server. In my future videos, when I'm going to walk through some of this feature, I'm going to use Linux Server and I'm going to mainly use SSH to connect to the servers. And then finally, EC2 has an SLA commitment of phone nines, that is 99.99% availability. In my experience using AWS for more than three, four years, I have never seen any downtime in EC2. I have seen downtime in other services, not in EC2 so far. The next one, when it comes to, again, compute where we deploy code is Elastic Beanstalk. Elastic Beanstalk is a little bit more restrictive and Elastic Beanstalk service is mainly used for deploying web application. Elastic Beanstalk supports .NET along with other programming languages like Java, PHP, Node.js, Python, Ruby, Go. We can also deploy Docker images into Elastic Beanstalk. And Elastic Beanstalk comes with web servers such as IIS, which we mostly use with .NET, Nginx, Apache, and Passenger. In Elastic Beanstalk, we just need to upload the code and it will automatically handle the deployment, the capacity provisioning, load balancing, auto scaling and health monitoring. So essentially, we don't have to worry about the server at all. All we have to do is just upload the code and that's about it. It will automatically take care of handling everything. Now, I personally have not used Beanstalk so far. The reason for that is 
I don't want to use IIS as my web server because IIS is very heavy. And when it is compared with Kestrel, the web server that comes out of box with .NET Core, Kestrel is astronomically faster compared to IIS. So in my opinion, there is no upside of using IIS as a web server unless you're running a legacy .NET framework application. And in terms of pricing, we pay only the resources to store and run the application. So essentially, the storage needed for storing the files which is pretty minimal and then the compute capacity to run the application the next compute service that we want to talk is Fargate so what is Fargate Fargate is serverless compute engine for containers and then Fargate can be used both with Elastic Container Services and Elastic Kubernetes Services. I'm going to talk about Elastic Container Services in this video. I'm not going to talk about Elastic Kubernetes Services. I have personally used it and I prefer using Elastic Container Services for its simplicity. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later in the video. With Fargate, we do not manage servers. It is totally serverless. We just provide containers and it takes care of running where the compute capacity is available. Fargate takes care of allocating right amount of compute capacity and eliminates the need for choosing instances. Unlike EC2, we don't have to worry about choosing instances with Fargate. And lastly, it runs each task on its own kernel for higher security, which makes it a very popular compute resource with some of the financial services as well. Though the pricing of Fargate is a little bit higher compared to if you are using ECS and managing the compute yourself. But on the long run, based on the management overhead versus not managing anything, Fargate might be a better option. And the next feature I wanted to talk about is AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is serverless compute service. If we go back, we can see that same thing for Fargate. Fargate is also a serverless compute engine. So the question might be, what is the difference between Fargate and AWS Lambda? Well, for Fargate, it is a compute engine where you can run a container, whereas Lambda is a compute service where you can run a container if you want to, but you can just deploy a code and run the code or run a function as is. That's the fundamental difference between Fargate and Lambda. And as you can see, we came from fully managing everything ourselves on EC2 to slowly Lambda, which is everything managed. With Lambda, it lets us run code without provisioning server, managing server, managing cluster, managing runtime. None of these are needed when it comes to AWS Lambda. In AWS Lambda, we can either run event-based callback application. For example, you can have a function which will get triggered based on some of the eventing mechanism or queuing mechanism. For example, SQS or SNS. These are queuing and eventing mechanism available in AWS, which I'm going to talk about in subsequent videos. Or we can use Lambda for standard web services. We can either just upload the code zip file or container image into Lambda. And when we get into the hands-on session in subsequent videos, we'll see how easy and simple it is to do this. And then in terms of pay, we pay for the compute time we consume. In some cases, AWS Lambda can be really cheap compared to EC2. It depends on use case. If you are building a web service which has a very high number of requests, then Lambda is not a good option. In this case, EC2 is. And also Lambda kills the container running the function after ideal time, which means you have to, if you need a better performance, you have to ping the service at a frequent interval, which will end up making Lambda expensive for services, a requirement of very high throughput. So in that case, EC2 is definitely a better option. EC2 or Fargate is definitely a better option. Now, after discussing these four services, there are a couple of features which we need to absolutely discuss without which none of this compute can be accessed. First of them is the load balancer. Now, Elastic Load Balancer is a service which automatically distributes incoming requests to multiple EC2 instances, containers running in either EC2 instances or in Fargate or Lambda functions and any of these can be in a single availability zone or multiple availability zone. 
The load balancer checks the health of the application frequently based on configuration and decides if the host is healthy or not and based on that it sends traffic. And whatever compute service we are using, be it EC2 or Fargate or Lambda, we are going to use load balancer. When it comes to Beanstalk, it still uses load balancer, but it is managed through Beanstalk. The next thing which we will also be using is the auto scaling service. AWS auto scaling service monitors our application and automatically adjust capacity based on the configured metrics. So if we set up the scaling out or scaling up based on the CPU or memory, it is going to react to that. Once we get into hands-on session, it'll be much more clearer how it is done. But for now, you have to remember that auto scaling is the feature which will be used for automatically adjust the capacity of services. The auto scaling helps maintain steady and predictable performance of our application. It's because it is extremely fast to scale up or scale down services using auto scaling. And especially if we use container, it's going to happen in a couple of minutes rather than multiple minutes or hours. It is very easy to optimize costs with auto scaling because we can define exactly when to scale out or scale down using which we can maintain the cost, overall cost of operating in the cloud. And it is very easy to set up scaling application using AWS auto scaling in the AWS console. So now that we discuss the compute features where the code will be deployed, the auto scaling which will be used for scaling our application, and then the load balancer which is responsible for getting requests from external world and sending the traffic to different containers or EC2 instances. The next thing is how do we manage container? And this is the most important topic and especially very relevant for what we do. When we build microservices in .NET Core or .NET 5, we are always going to deploy in container. There is no upside in deploying in a standalone box, in my opinion. It's much more efficient and easier to deploy microservices in container, in which case we are going to end up using container orchestration service. And from my experience, I prefer ECS as the container orchestration service. So ECS is nothing but Elastic Container Service. The Elastic Container Service is a fully managed container orchestration service. With Elastic Container Service, we can either choose to run our workload in EC2 or in Fargate or in both. I personally prefer EC2 as it gives more control over how many boxes and how to manage my load. Plus Fargate is a little bit expensive compared to EC2 but I always use Fargate as a one-off scale-out option. So for example, if you know the load of your application and it is pretty steady, you can go with EC2 as your base compute model, but in case of a sudden surge of traffic, those traffic can always get into Fargate and that's where your new container can run. And as soon as the traffic goes out, the container will die out. So the cost will be insignificant in that scenario. ECS comes with the concept of capacity provider and with capacity provider, it is very easy to manage infrastructure. It is just configuring everything in capacity provider and it takes care of managing the infrastructure for you. And with ECS, we can launch practically thousands of container without any additional complexity. It's because once you configure the ECS cluster, after that the ECS, the container service itself manages the starting as well as shutting down of container itself. Plus when a container goes bad, starting another container and everything done by Elastic Container Services. We don't have to get into manage any of this, which makes it really simple. And once we get into the AWS console in the next video, you will see that it is super simple to configure Elastic Container Services. We'll get into a little bit details of Elastic Container Services when we get hands-on but at a high level these are the main features of Elastic Container Services and Elastic Container Services uses the Elastic Container Registry which is the next topic I wanted to cover. Now, Elastic Container Registry is nothing but a fully managed container registry service. If you think about Docker Hub, Docker Hub is a container registry service. ECR is similarly a container registry service. 
It makes very easy to store, manage, share, and deploy container images using ECS or EKS. It is private repository, unlike Docker Hub, and much more secure since access to the ECR images can be controlled through roles. When we get into AWS in the next video, we'll see how we can create roles to manage access. And ECS is very highly available and reliable service. So this overall covers the compute aspect of AWS. Again, this is not in-depth. This is a very high level overview of what are the different services available in AWS compute and how we can use Elastic Container Service for managing and orchestrating containers in compute. In the next video, I'm going to get hands-on, create a EC2 instance, and then use ECR and ECS for deploying a container into AWS and try to access that. And then in subsequent video, I'm going to walk through using AWS Lambda and then some other AWS feature. If we have to pictorially depict this, it'll look something like this picture. Once a request comes from an external user, it gets into AWS. From AWS, it gets into load balancer. And from load balancer, it goes to any of the compute services. So based on what we use, it will either go into EC2 or it will get into Lambda or it will get into Elastic Beanstalk or it will get into Fargate. And on the other side, we have ECS or Elastic Container Service, which uses ECR as the registry. And from that, it can deploy a container either into EC2 or into Fargate. So this gives a high level pictorial view of how AWS compute can be used for running code and then ECS for deploying and managing container in EC2 and Fargate. This is all I had to cover today. If you think I should have covered something which I have not covered yet, please leave a comment below. And also, if you have a suggestion what all AWS feature you want me to cover, please leave me a comment and I will add those into my subsequent videos. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching this video.